offer his welcome <laughs> to all participants. Professor Shubaka, please. Yes, very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Wen Chao. Uh, Dr. Wiparat Diong, Executive Director of uh, NRCT. Professor uh, Hua Dong Guao, Academician of uh, Chinese Academy Sciences and Director General of International Research Center of Big Data for SDGs. Uh, Dr. Montip Sriratana, Director of DBAR International Center of Excellence in, in Thailand. All speakers and participants from AIT, China, Thailand, and other countries. A very good afternoon to you all. On behalf of AIT, I would like to warmly welcome you all to our webinar series. As the name of the, uh, this event itself suggests, uh, we aim to strengthen collaboration network between Thailand and China in the field of environment and sustainable development. Today's seminar, I recall, is the third event of the series, which is co-organized by the AIT's Belt and Road Research Center and National Research Council of Thailand. Uh, colleagues, at the outset, uh, let me highlight that sustainability is a key focal area for Asian Institute of Technology since last many years. Uh, SDG as a political goal to achieve towards sustainability by 2030 is an important milestone which AIT is committed to provide support from the knowledge front, building human capacity and the policy support. Today's webinar topic, strengthening Thailand and China's collaboration on big data for sustainable goal is very much aligned towards this. Uh, let us keep in mind a simple fact that only about half of sustainable development indicator, SDG, SDG indicators, only half of them have sufficient data in Asia Pacific for benchmarking and monitoring SDG according to a latest UN report. AIT is very much pleased that digital Belt and Road program was initiated in 2016 by the Chinese Academy of Sciences with aim to improve environmental monitoring, promote data sharing, and support policymaking using the big data, including, including the Earth observation data. Now that Chinese Academy of Science has launched a new international research center of big data for sustainable development in 2021, AIT is pleased to collaborate as we all know how important is the role of data in SDG discourse. Together with the DBAR International Center of Excellence in Bangkok and other regional partners, AIT is very much pleased to play a significant role in progressing the achievement of SDGs in Thailand and Southeast Asia in general. Uh, let me recall that since 2018, our researchers and experts from both countries, Thailand and China, have been already collaborating closely on indices and indicators to feed into UN Nations Agenda 2030 and the SDGs. And would also like to take the opportunity of today's webinar to introduce the recent progress of cooperation between China and Thailand on developing and applying the big earth data in support of the SDGs and to also discuss on future direction to deepen such cooperations between us. Uh, as a unique regional multicultural in institution of higher learning, offering state-of-art education, research and training in technology management and social development, please allow me to reiterate that AIT is positioned to play a leading role in the sustainable development of this region and its integration into the global economy. I'm confident that AIT's partnership with the BRI would be mutually beneficial in the pursuit of sustainable development of this region. AIT's core research, uh, if I may recall, lie in five uh, major themes or domain. Uh, the first is climate change. Second is smart communities. The third is infrastructure. The fourth is food, energy, water, and their nexus. And last but not the least is 
the technology policy and society and their interaction. I can see that all of these AIT teams are in synergy with your initiative, and there are great opportunities for us for the future collaboration to work together uh, on this. Uh, colleagues, uh, we are also approaching about halfway mark from 2015 to 2030, uh, almost halfway. The recent UN and other reports have shown that I'm sure you have noted that we are not on track, rather we are off track to meet 2030 goals. Time is slowly starting to run out to correct the course. Asia and the Pacific SDG Progress Report, which was published by UN SCAP uh, last March, uh, March 2022, uh, it shows very clearly that the progress towards SDG had slowed as a COVID-19 pandemic and the climate change have stressed our development challenges. In the current pace, the report has painted a quite a grim picture that it will take us till 2065 to achieve the SDGs in the Asia Pacific region. At the current rate of change, none of the 17 SDGs will be achieved in all five sub-regions of, of you know, UNSCAP sub-regions, and only in the East and Northeast Asia is on track towards no poverty, that is goal number one, and industry innovation and infrastructure goal number nine. So you can, you can see where we stand right now. That's why I would like to urge all of us that let's not forget that we must accelerate progress to achieve SDGs in Asia Pacific region, and let's work together to address this situation. Uh, finally, uh, I would especially acknowledge our co-organizers, the National Research Council of Thailand uh, and the Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation. I also appreciate our partners and speakers from Chinese Academy of Sciences, Digital Belt and Road Program, National Economic and Social Development Council of Thailand and my fellow colleagues from AIT and also from the UN Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific for their great support of today's webinar. I, I wish you all a very successful webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Shubhaka, for your warm welcome and also helping us to quickly overview the challenge we are facing and uh, uh, trying to uh, solve through this collaboration. Thank you very much. Uh, now we are very honored to invite uh, Dr. Viparat Dion and Professor Hua Dongguo to deliver their opening remarks. Dr. Uh, Viparat Dion is the uh, Executive Director of the National Research Council of Thailand, uh, or NRCT. In the past, she served at NRCT as the Head of Research Promotion and Development Section, Director of Public Sector Development Division, and also di uh, Director of uh, Research Evaluation and the Knowledge Management Division. Dr. Dion holds a PhD in Democracy, uh, Democracy from Mahidong University. Dr. Dion, please. Distinguished speaker and participants, greetings to all. It gives me great pleasure to deliver opening remarks for the webinar series on strengthening collaboration network between Thailand and China. In the field of environment and sustainable development, this time on the topic of big data for the sustainable development goal, which is aimed at strengthening collaboration between Thailand and China in the field of environment and sustainable development. The National Research Council of Thailand, NRCT, is honored and profoundly grateful to be a part of the partnership. In organizing this webinar together with the AIT Braille and Road Research Center of the ASEAN Institute of Technology, I would also convey my appreciation to our collaborative organization and institutes, including the Digital Bell and Road Program, International Research Center of Big Data for Sustainable Development Goals. Chinese Academy of Science, Office of the National Economic 
and Social Development Council and UN Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific. I should mention that NRCTS runs cooperation with the Bell and Road Initiative and is hosting the Digital Bell and Road International Center of Excellence known as DIBA ICOE Bangkok in which AIT is a collaborator. To this platform, I'm confident that the Thailand-China cooperation will get stronger in the many years ahead. NRCT is the principal organization in Thailand which guided the development of the country and public policy by using research, including the integration and the administration of national research budget reading up to the concrete utilization. NRCT administers research work with professional standards by using moral principles to read achievement. NRCT employs this value and principle in its delivery of research and development program in alignment with the UN Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goal. I am confident that the outcome of this webinar addressing big data as well as in subsequent webinars on other important key sustainable development sectors will be valuable in running the status of SDG implementation in Thailand, China, and other countries in the region. Again, I thank our partner organizations and stakeholders, and I wish the webinar well. Many thanks to the opening remarks from Dr. Dion. Um, Professor Hua Dongguo is the Director General of International Research Center of Big Data for Sustainable Development Goal, uh, or CBAS, uh, and also uh, an academician of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Professor Guo is meanwhile a foreign member of the Russian Academy of Sciences, a foreign member of the Finnish Society of Sciences and Letters, and a fellow of the World Academy of Sciences, or uh, TIVAS. Uh, he present, uh, presently serves as the president of the International Society for Digital Earth, director of the International Center on Space Technology for Natural and Cultural Heritage under the UNESCO, uh, the, uh, editor in chief of several international journals, and also the chairman of the Digital Belt and Road Program. He has been one of the leading scientists in remote sensing science radar for Earth observation and uh, digital Earth technology, and also made a distinguished contribution to the region and the world with his research and uh, great uh, service. So it is my honor to invite Professor Guo to deliver his uh, opening remarks. Professor Guo, please. Uh, thank you so much, uh, the Dr. Wen Chou, for your very kind uh, introduction. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Professor Dakar, Dr. Dion, uh, Dr. Sri Atana, the distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my great pleasure to participate in this seminar on strengthening China Thailand's collaboration on big data for the sustainable development goals. Thank you so much for your effort to make this happen especially to our CBAR senior executives, our deputy director and Dr. Massimo Sri Ratana, senior advisor to the National Research Council of Thailand. As you all know that the United Nations SDGs are the global common to the human benefits initiated by the United Nations in 2015. As the new resource and tool Big data are employed to support the enrich the ways of addressing the UN SDG globally. Uh, the Chinese President Xi Jinping said that the 23rd agenda of sustainable development set clear goals for national development 
as well as the global development and the cooperation, and it highlights that the design, technology, and innovation, and application of the big data will help the international community to overcome the challenges and implement of the UN 2030 agenda program. CBAS is dedicated to harnessing big data to serve the 2030 agenda for sustainable development with the aim to promote collective action. So share, share technological platform, information, digital resources, and uh, data. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, recalling back to the 2016 as a strong commitment to the SDGs with bigger data technologies. Our common digital banner road program, the B Bar, was aimed to improve environmental monitoring. Promote data sharing and support policy making using big data capacity, including earth weighting data. Thailand is our partner and is strongly involved in this DBAR program. In 2018, DBAR ICOE Bangkok was set up in Bangkok towards improving the implementing big data, bigger data research in policy development and for decision support. We know that the China can have the good alignment in the geographical connections and the environment. And the SDG, SDGs are the common challenges for both countries. With the strong collaboration between ICOE and the DBAR program, the backbone of DBAR, the CBARS, has been putting its effort into investigating uh, in the indices and the indicators and a bigger data platform, launching the SDU-1, SDG Satellite 1 in December of the 2021, delivering the SDG reporting at a global national level from the 2019 to now. All of this could provide the basis and the support for the collaborations in the South Asian region. In the past few years, several meetings and uh, seminars have been organized to enhance the connections and the data utilizing for the SDG efforts with our friends in Thailand. The ICOE plays a great role in tracking and studying the development and the changes in the brand Road region. Now, CBARS, as the host organization to DBAR Secretariat, provides the data and facilitating our partners of ICOE. In the coming days, the sixth DBAR International Conference site and the 2022 science team meeting will be held in Beijing online with the theme of digital technology for the coming future and support the global development initiative, especially from the Bern Road regions. Thailand is an important toy. We will be together for this core design and core development on SDGs by big data. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, I really want to say I'm very happy to join this seminar. Even I'm sorry to say I have some technical problem, uh, trouble, but I'm really happy you have this wonderful meeting. I do hope you have the fruitful discussion and I will have a very happy meeting time for all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor Guo, and uh, thank you again for trying uh, very hard to keep connecting with us. So our first uh, keynote speaker today is uh, Professor Yu Bao Yu. Uh, so, sorry, Yu Bao Chu. Professor Chu is the Secretary General of the Digital Belt and Road Program and also a professor of the International Research Center of Big uh, Data for Sustainable Development Goals. He received his PhD uh, in microwave remote sensing from the Institute of Remote Sensing Applications, Chinese Academy of Sciences. He worked as an expert to group on Earth Observation Geneva, uh, Switzerland from 2012 to 2015. And he also served for several international committees and is the chef coordinator for promoting global Earth observation code region initiative. Uh, over the past five years, he has published uh, over 70 articles and also 
uh, worked as a principal investigator for several projects on remote sensing and the environment. So I'm very pleased to invite Professor Chu to provide his keynote speak first. Professor Chu, please. So here is uh, uh, Yu Bao from our uh, uh, International Research Center of Biggest Data for Sustainable Goals. Uh, today I'm, I'm very honorable to have this chance to make the, to join the, the third seminar from the China and the Thailand on the SDGs. So my talk will be focused on the introduction to the CBOS and also the research recent development of a DBAR program. So this is a, I will show some the, the data result and also uh, the background of the CBAS and the DBAR. So first then our introduction to the DBAR and the CBAS. As you, uh, before I, I start my, my, my talk, I will show you two slides about the uh, technology for facilitation mechanism. So this is one of the most important science and technology to support the sustainable development goals and uh, for addressing the 2020, uh, 2030 agenda for the SDGs. So this is the, you know, the movement from the 2015 and by hundreds of the countries, and then they put the goal of the whole world. So this is a very important. And then the science, technology and innovation is the core of this movement. So here we can see Many sustainable development goals targets are related to, uh, to the SDR progress. So here we, we, we can say 14 directed and related to the uh, uh, TFM and uh, 34 is quite much relevant and more than 100 is interacted. So this is uh, the gaps that we would like to see how to address the, you know, the different uh, the goals. And the second is in, Emphasize importance of the STI science technology innovation for the SDGs. So this is a, this is the, uh, the the activities that we now we are doing. So you can see from here. Um, I, I will show you that. Yes, from from here you, you can see uh, lots of uh, movie, something like uh, uh, really fun fancy uh, movie. And this is a demonstration of our uh, data support such kind of sustainable development goals. So here we recognize that the nature and the social domain of the Earth as a holistic research object, object and it manifests as a science and a virtual representation of the physical model, mathematical model, and also information model in, you know, inside the computer, such, something like the digital Digital, digital time for the SDGs. So this is the background for, for the whole world. So this map shows the uh, marine time sick load and also the sick load economy map. So this is a very vast area, include the Euro, Euro Asia and also the Africa and include our uh, Oceania, Oceania uh, together. So this map shows a uh, better load than the vision and also our domain that we are working on. So here we can see it's a vast area and it involves a larger population facing then, you know, many, many, many challenges that are relevant to the sustainable developments. So this is our, our debar. So here I will, I will uh, figure out that uh, in 2016, yes, the Thailand, uh, some institute our partners like Jista and also our uh, uh, really good friend Monsip are, are our uh, digital battle loader program. At that time, we initiated Professor Board leading to keep the, the step forward to use the data and the big data to support the uh, digital battle loader SDGs. So this at that time is the main, is in 2016, May 17, we have this um, conference and I also announced that we created and that or initiated these programs. So the, this is the program's aim is to establish our international biggest data analysis and decision support system covering the breadth and loader regions and develop the SDG indicators in variation systems 
for the eight development goals uh, and also achieve the scientific monitoring of the major SDG indicators around the pattern load. That to say we rely on the SDI, we rely on the TFM systems and the mechanism to support the SDGs around the pattern and load regions. So this is our DBAR work flow. From here, we will see we have nine working groups. We have nine, we have eight focus four, four, four So you will see here include the water, urban, disaster, heterology, environmental, coast, and the marine, agriculture, and also infrastructures. This is something that relevant to the social benefit areas. And then we created nine working groups. So this is the data working groups to link with the biggest data platform. And we have coastal disaster, heterology, agriculture, environment, and also water, urban, and cold regions. You know, those of the human that something like a pillow on that. So this is we have nine working groups on that. And, you know, the most important for us is about the ICOE, International Center of Excel Excellence. So Thailand is one of our best uh, partnership overseas that to, you know, to take, to hold the ecosystem and also environment sustainable in the South Asia. So this is uh, uh, our partner, Mansipo is our uh, uh, distinguished director for uh, to this SOE. And we have some others like Russia, Finland, and also Italian, Pakistan, Gambia, Ghana, and also Morocco, and uh, one in the United States. So this is, we have nine now, and I include this, uh, this is uh, Beijing is our headquarter for the DVAR. And uh, now uh, the new time, you know, you know that last year, the inauguration of the CBUS on September 6, 2021, President Xi Jinping, and also the uh, UN Secretary General, you know, congratulatory letters to the CBUS launch on, you know, on the September 6. So that is the former the CBUS was set up by the, by China and also hosted by the Chinese government scientists. So this is a, uh, at that time, it's a, it's a, it's a, a big news for all of this UN SDGs. So here I will show some words that to say the under sector general, uh, for example, from econo economic and social affairs, and also sec under sector general and an executive director of the UNAV. And also we have the uh, under sector general and executive sector of UNCCD. And uh, you know, joining us and uh, to give uh, the opening remarks and to strengthen the global partnerships and also you know, bridge the data, uh, in, you know, the enhance the requirement to bridge the data gaps of the CBAS that can do by the big data to improve our effectiveness in the using environmental data. And also, you know, to address in the application in the, you know, compact the desertification. So this is a, a tech to see we have lots of the UN systems, the agency, they can, you know, they will benefit from the big data and to, in, to address or access the data and also to invalidate the uh, SDG indicators. So our vision is to towards a vision that data is open. This is very important. So then later we will discuss the open issues and accessible across the border and not disciplinary. Technology is available. That is, we created lots of new uh, tools. That tools and then plus the data. And then we created that knowledge so that we will build a knowledge hub for the UN SDGs. So this is our aim. And the mission of the CBAS is to build, for example, uh, we have four missions. The first one is the data infrastructure. That to say we have our own uh, data infrastructure and even the satellite. satellite. And the second is to build a knowledge for the SDG monitoring and evaluation. And uh, where, and we already have launched uh, SDG satellite one. And we will get a SDG satellite constellation in a few years later. And a capacity building is uh, another uh, important important pillow for the CBUS. So for example, our ICOE of Thailand will work with us and to take some, some of those functions 
to expand the you know, biggest data capability to for addressing that uh, UNSDGs. So here's a hot quarter of, of the CBUS. We have a 33 class institutions, and we have 96, almost 100 participant organizations, and more than 1,000 scientists to link with this these uh, systems. So uh, hopefully uh, when COVID-19 is open, that will be good to invite all of you to join us in, in Beijing. And uh, this is our uh, physical uh, visiting place in uh, Beijing city. So here we will we set up the uh, international advisory committee and uh, we have uh, the uh, chair, vice chair, we have 18 members from our, 12 countries working in the areas of big data, earth observations, and also the uh, UNSDGs. Okay, so, but based on that, we have our own big, big data platform. So we have different scientists. We have decision makers. We have our, you know, uh, the systems, the computing system, the human, and also the computing interface. That to say, this is the way tailored the service up to up to now, and we invested uh, more than one billion uh, uh, MB to for for those facilities. So this is the like the block of the the big data. So we have eleven uh, pigpet and also more than forty years satellite image data, and uh, lots of other you know this uh, interdisciplinary uh, domain that we can provide the data. Uh, open and uh, global. So this is uh, our legacy of, uh, from the Cast Earth uh, uh, engineering program. So this is our uh, satellite systems that the Ch Chinese climate sciences and also our, we have a alliance now to link with the different satellite systems together to provide the data uh, to for supporting the SDGs so this slide shows that uh, we already launched the uh, SDG uh, satellite one uh, last year, November 5th, and now the data is opening uh, for the Cast Earth project and it will soon be open to all of the, uh, the DBAR community and also the international community. So, so that to say in, in, in the next few days, we will have a meeting on the DBAR 2022. And in that meeting, we will discuss the data. And later I would like to you know, Kodali invited some of uh, you uh, you guys and can join us to to share, you know, the opening of, of those data issues. We will work on that. So here we show some samples. This is one of the uh, Beijing city. So here the Beijing city, the net light uh, image. And also we have the uh, multi, multi, uh, uh, It's a, it's a multi uh, spectral image on the on the uh, yellow delta, and also we have the infrared uh, image on that. So this is uh, reflected the energy and and the temperature since. And uh, beside the data, we also produced uh, you know the the scientific report. So this is the, we already have uh, released the three years reported. Uh, uh, opening and submit to the UN General Assembly, and also uh, now we are working for the 2002 report on that. So this is a, we also uh, support the country. So this is for the China uh, progress on SDG, and we you know we so, you know support support the data, provide the data for the voluntary national review of the SDG in in China. So this is the the booklet that. We uh, open online. You can check online and uh, search it from Google or other uh, searching engine. You can find the, doc, uh, the the report. So later I will show you some of our cases. So this is we already open uh, different global data sets that will be freely to open for those who would like to use support the SDG in their own country in or, or in the regional area like uh, China, uh, Asian Plate or South Asia. That will be. A most important region that we would like to work with. Such, for example, the ICOE Thailand is most important for us to to reach to outreach all of those, those data. So here's the uh, you know global data project include the different land cover or other uh, bony product or other productivity. 
yes, we, we, we now we have the carbon dioxide uh, satellite, and we will also, you know, produce different data on that. And, uh, you know, later I will show you different example, very good example. So here is an example from the spatial distribution of the farmland sites and agriculture productive in Zambia. So this is uh, for Africa, Africa place. And uh, we, uh, yes, we have some example to support that China uh, towards the sustainable cropping systems. So this is the online systems that, that can produce the environmental and also the, the, the cropping uh, assessment for, for our uh, future or sustainable development goals. So this is a, a monitoring of the data the locust in the South Asia and also Africa. So that is a very important, uh, you know, to, to protect the land and also the vegetable, the land ecosystems. And then this is just the example of the, you know, the, the lake, uh, you will see now the lake become cleaner now. So this is the sustainable uh, indicators that we're directly from the uh, observation of the satellite. So this is a really important. And, and I think this data is open now online in the Cus Earth platform. So this is the uh, uh, better than load example of, of the surface water transparency. So this is a, um, also shows that the, uh, some some of those lakes become cleaner. Some of the lakes become you know dirty, and and, and also the, the water quality is not that good. So this is a uh, really good example. And here's a dynamic change of the water body in Ramsar sites. So this is a, to you know answer the question of the UN Ramsar UNCCD. They have the Ramsar uh, Convention. So that is uh, uh, some support also. So this is uh, some example of the urban sustainability. So that to say, we find a reason of the changing of the of the urban. So we have a different themes uh, and also different analysis focus on the urban. For example, this is the, the public transportation, and uh, and this is the load network that can be extracted uh, by the biggest data tools and also to rely on the satellite data to show the you know the reachable uh, uh, the load network. And uh, here it's uh, the, the urban, you know, sprawl and uh, urbanization. So this is uh, uh, to invalidate the, the, you know, the urbanization. Uh, for example, the China for the for the last uh, <clears throat> decades, we have lots of, uh, uh, you know, cities, cities. So gathering together and to produce uh, uh, the GDP. So that is uh, uh, another information that we can get from the Earth observation data. So this is the urban sprawl of the nation uh, for the. Uh, ASEAN country and the Southern Asia. So it's still very, very important. And I think we can we can have some connection on this. Okay. So, so here is the nature and the culture of strategic protection. So this is just another kind of the ecosystem and to produce the human human kind of you know uh, heterogeneity. So this is also uh, something linked with the old buildings, the old walls, and all the other. Uh, ecosystem and uh, to invalidate. And now, you know, the, the carbon neutral, neutrality is a, a, a key word for all of the country. So here is the air pollution, uh, uh, carbon dioxide or, or nitrogen dioxide, that is uh, important for the, you know, for the pollution of the air quality. So this is the air quality P PM 2.5, and this is for China, and we will use those data. And also we have our own satellite that can produce the evaluation of those data to the Southern Asia, I think. So here's a global terrest terrestrial carbon sink and its driving factors. And we have lots of uh, the ecosystem and the carbon issues that link with the energy, green energy, link with the water, link with the, the forest, link with the uh, carbon dioxide and nit nitrogen dioxide. So this is all what can combine together to address the, for example, the environment issues like carbon neutrality. So that is uh, uh, quite important for us. So this is for ocean, ocean heat content. This is the uh, analysis of distribution and the variation of marine debris and uh, macro plastic in China's coastal water. I think this is a steer for that island, uh, South Asia country, and even our center of excellence in Thailand. So we will build connection on that. So this is uh, some uh, coastal water uh, in, in China. And this is uh, that mangrove forest around the maritime cyclone that will be 
also, you know, you can extract the data from our database on that. So this is by 2020, conserve at least 10% of the coast and the marine areas. So this is, a, you know, we focus on the, the bomb graph of the marine and the coast areas. We, we keep the coast of the safety, healthy. So this is the, the, the uh, we can say the benefits of the goods to the human, human, uh, human rights. So this is the UNCCD, so we can uh, global land degradation, neutrality tracking. So this is the degradation, but for the South Asia, it looks much better than other place. For example, in the East, uh, in the Southwest, South Nose, <laughs> or, or Africa place that is uh, not, not that easy. Okay, so we have lots of, I even did some of those examples, but I think that would be, we can find some uh, not and uh, interesting and uh, to exchange on that. And later I will, I will show you some, we have the UN systems agency that we can connect with them. So CBAS is a, it's good to have a UN systems a connection. And also, yes, we have our own, you know, uh, overseas like Bangkok, Thailand, uh, ICOE, we have nine now, we, we expand more and more. And I hope we can build the connections on that and the data to provide a report to John Taylor with the with ICOE. And we have, uh, you know, folks on the different countries. And uh, besides that, so CBAS also uh, organized a brick forum on the big data. So this, this activities uh, next year, so this is uh, this year, I'm sorry, I, 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 for next year is 2000, 2023, we will also host this brick forum on the big data for sustainable development goals. So this is one of the tasks of the CBAS. And uh, except that, that we build our legacy of the, you know, uh, support activity. For example, we support the Thailand and also the SDGs. We have a national conference with you. I know that in the past few years, we have lots of activities here. And a project of application biggest data in support in Thailand. Also, we will, we can provide the, you know, basis uh, data on that. So this is the cost earth data sharing service portal and you can check online and this is a we you know we have a discussion with the dbar to have a interface with the uh, dbar working groups and also seos to use those cast earth data and we we have our own you know computing systems like uh, dbar biggest data systems that will i will you know now i am the secretary general and i work with them uh, just a few days ago to di discuss the you know Discuss uh, something like uh, uh, of understanding or, or some other document to say we, we can use those data opening. So this is another since I would like to invite I see Bangkok to join this session, DBA data sharing and also applications about the DBA working group at the ICOEs. I think uh, a, a short presentation, for example, five minutes presentation from the ICOE Bangkok will be much appreciated. And uh, you can say uh, the requirement you can say uh, what kind of data you need and we would like to see how much we can provide and then we will discuss on that to pro you know produce the data policy produce the data uh, principle and to say the dbar can you know based on the cbus and provide the connection with our icoes so this is my presentation a little bit longer and i'm sorry because this is a, a quite a lot information on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wen Chao. Thank you very much, Professor Chu, and uh, thank you for sharing with us a very uh, valuable and com uh, comprehensive information about the uh, DBA and CBAS, and also the very interesting activities has been uh, led and engaged by the center. So please allow me to uh, invite our uh, next uh, speaker, um, Dr. Uh, Tu Tai. Uh, Kira Tipon Paipon. So, who is the director of uh, International Strategy and the Coordination Division Office of the National Economic and the Social Development uh, Co uh, Council, or NESDC of Thailand? Uh, his uh, responsibility includes uh, uh, SDG planning and uh, implementation, uh, APEC Economic Committee, National Secretariat, and other sub uh, regional cooperation. Uh, he's um, a specialist, a specialist including 
uh, in uh, international public po uh, policy, population aging, labor economics, and uh, development uh, economics. And he received his PhD in uh, economics from the University of London. So Dr. Tutai, yeah, please. Hello everyone. It is my honor to be a speaker today to share the experiences about the urban means to support the SDG reporting in Thailand. As you may know that NSDC is the central planning agency who is in charge with the SDG planning and also the SDG implementations. Data are very important. When we plan for the futures, when we plan for the country's sustainabilities, we need to use the data. We need to use data to know exactly the status of the countries, to know exactly what we should do in the next step. So today, I would like to share the experiences from the government side, how we use the data, how the data are very important in SDT implementations. Let me share the slides. I hope you can see my slide clearly. So before I talk about the data, I would like to tell you a little bit about the country's development pathways towards sustainability. For the first five years of the SDGs that during the 2016 to 2020s, Thailand did a number of things. The first thing is that we set up the national mechanism to implement the SDGs, so-called the National Committees on Sustainable Development, chaired by the Prime Minister or the assigned Deputy Prime Minister. Apart from that, we did the um, reporting as well, right? We report the SDG progress in the internet, international stretch. For example, we did the VNR, Stand for the voluntary national review and we report in the United Nations high level political forums, officially in 2017 and 2019. And last year, we did an official report in the SLPF as well. We also consider that SDG is not just the national level, but also the local level. That's why we did the pilot project in the um, nine pilot provinces, right, across the countries. And also, we also did the reporting of the progress that so-called we launched the first official report of the Thailand SD progress, so-called Thailand's SDG report 2016 and 2020s. For this decade, that the United Nations called the, the decade of actions we will continue on implementing the SDG roadmap and make it happen, right? We consider that SDGs and the national strategy is one thing. We try to integrate the SDGs and the two levels of the national development plan together. And we will develop the indicators to, to be aligned with the Thailand context. Monitoring and evaluation is very important. Right, so we will continue to develop the MIE approach as well in order to capture the status of the SDGs in Thailand. You can see from this slide as well that although the 2030 is the last year for the 2030 agenda for sustainable development of the United Nations, but for Thailand, we need to see further, right? You can see from this slide that the last year for this slide is the 2037, which is the last year of the national strategy of Thailand. The national strategy is kind of the long-term plan, long-term development plan for the countries. So we had the mandate from the Thai constitutions. And so, um, so we see the ultimate goals of the countries. Testimony is um, the last year of the national strategies. So, that is the thing that we need to consider both SDGs and the national strategy together, and we have one pathway to follow. Here is the Thailand SDG roadmap. I have limited time, so I cannot um, 
I cannot just go into detail of these six dimensions of the SD roadmap, but let me say a little bit about the SD roadmap. For this roadmap, um, it has been approved by the National Committees on Sustainable Development, chaired by the Deputy Prime Minister, Daryl Prabhupada Ong Suwan. You can see from this roadmap is that we need to, the first one is to raise the awareness among people. Right, because we need to tell the people that SDG is not just like the environmental issue, but it beyond. It has to concern about the the people dimensions, the prosperity dimensions, the planet, the um, the peace and the partnership dimensions, also called five peace. So the first one is to raise awareness among people. The second one is that we need to integrate the SDG into the. Um, the all levels of the development plans. So, um, so that includes the national strategies, that the long-term plan strategies of the countries, and also the, um, the, the master plans or the thematic development plans of, of the countries, the national economic and social development plan, which is the five-year plans, and the, uh, and, the, and the plans for the country's securities. That is the second level of the plan. And the third plan is that the military operational plans or other related plans. So when we talk about any kind of the development plans of Thailand, we need to integrate the SDG concept into that plan. That is the second dimension of the SDG roadmap. The third one is kind of the institutional and the coordination mechanism that we have to set up. You know already that the national level has been set up. Right, the national mechanism has already been set up um, that we call the national committees on the sustainable development. But we also emphasize on the local level. That's why we introduce the SDG mechanisms to the provincial and the local authorities level as well. So that is the third dimension of the plan. The fourth one is to implement the SDGs into actions, right, to make it happen. So we say that um, any projects of the government need to contribute to the SDG as well. So that is the fourth dimension of the SDG roadmap. The fifth one is the partnership. We need to build a network amongst the stakeholders, not just the, the public agencies, but also the private agency as well, and also the, 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 the research institutes, the academias, and also the international organizations and the CSOs. Last but not least, we focus on the monitoring and variations because we know that any kind of the things, we need to know the status. When we implement any plan, we cannot ignore to evaluate. We cannot ignore the M&E progress, right? We cannot ignore the M&E approach because we have to know the status, we have to know the result, we have to know the outcomes of the projects. The SDG as well, when we talk to SDG implementation, we need to know about the, not just the outcome and the output, but the impacts of the SDGs. That's why the data are very important. So here is how the NSDCs use the data in order to know about the status of the SDGs. We try to capture the data from a number of the ministries, not just the public organizations, but also the state owned enterprise, but also the, pub, the, the private sectors, but also the, um, the academias or the research institutes, and also the international organizations as well. We capture the data and analyze the data of sketchers, right? And once we got the analysis of the data and the result of the analysis, we try to um, try to summarize to be the progress of the SDGs. You can see here from this slide that is the pro SDG progress result, right? So for the first five years, we launched the first official SDG progress report for Thailand. You can scan the QR code appear in this slide to see the full report. It's being comprised of 300 to 400 pages because it's covered the detailed report, right? So in this report, we use a traffic stoplight to illustrate 
the status of the SDGs from the red color, that is the critical one. The orange color is the second critical one. It's not, it's not um, as, um, as bad as the, 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 the orange color, right? So the orange is kind of the, 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 the second critical one, right? And the, the yellow color is, you, is mean like you are on the track, but you have to keep walking. And the green color is like you achieve the target already. So for the first five years of the SDG implementations, we, <clears throat> we evaluate two levels of the SDGs. The first one is the goal level, and the second one is the target level. For the goal level, we have the selected goals of the SDGs. Ten, <clears throat> ten goals has, have been illustrated by the orange color, sorry, by the yellow color. Right. In the meantime, seven goals of the SDGs have been illustrated by the orange color. This means we are still on the track, but we have to keep moving, right? We have to keep walking and a little bit running to, to achieve the goal by 2030. That is the, the first level of the report, the goal level. For the target level, that we have 169 targets, right? You can see from the right hand side that with the big circle, the, the colorful circle. Here, it was the status of the SDG targets during the first five years, right? You can see from the very first SDG target 1.1, right? 1.2, 1.3, until the last target of the SDG is at 17.19, right? And from this one, you can see the status or the progress of the SDG implementation of each target. I just can summarize to you that about 30.8% of the SDG target already achieved, right? In the meantime, about 43.8% of the SDG target um, have been rested by the orange, sorry, by the yellow color. This means that like you are on the track, but you have to keep walking to the target, to the, to the, to the, to the goals of the 2030s. 20.1% 20 of the SDG targets have been illustrated by the orange color. It means not just keep walking, but you have to keep landing in order to achieve the target by 2030. Last but not least, we can see that 5.3% of the SDG targets um, have been illustrated by the red color. It means they are in the critical stage. Right, so about nine out of 169 targets are critical. So um, I just um, launched the report and, 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 and tell the relevant agency that they need, to, they need to do to accelerate the progress of the SDG in the countries. And that is the thing, how the data works, right? The data tell the progress of the SDGs. And the progress will tell the agencies to work further. So it is the, the first example that's how the data works for the SDG implementations. The second one is that we try to integrate the SDG concept into the national evaluation system that we call the events. Some of you may be familiar with the events. You know that um, from um, the last like five years, we um, initiate one system that we call the events, the monitoring and evaluation national system, right? It's just like one system to monitor all projects of the public agencies, not just the government agency, not just the line ministries, but we include the state or enterprise, we include the public organization as well. They need to report to the email system. So it means like when you log in the email system, you can see that how the um, projects of the government agencies um, contribute to the national strategies. That is the current concept of the email. From now on, hopefully next year, when we integrate the SDG concept into this system, it means you can see that how the um, governmental projects contribute to the SDGs. 
right? How the how the projects of the government contribute to the SDG 1.1, 1.2, or SDG 17.19, right? You can you can just um log in this system, the email system, and you can see that how how the, the project of the government relate to the SDG implementations and how it contributes to the SDGs in order to achieve the SDGs. That is the second thing that when we got data from the land ministries, from the government agencies, we can see that how we can report the SDGs and the result of the SDGs. Because you know that for the events, it's not just like to tell the details of the project, but they have to contribute the outcome, output, and possibly impacts of the project. And you can see for, for evaluations of this um, outcome, output, and impacts, you can see that the project um, will contribute to the, the, the national strategies and also the SDG as well. That is the, 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 the second thing that's how the data works for the SDG reporting. I think I have the limited time to talk um, about the, 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 the case studies in details, but let me say this in, um, in brief, right? So for this one, I just would like to show you that how the big data contribute to the SDGs implementations. For this case studies, it's kind of how the big data contribute to SDG 1. No priority, right? So for Thailand, we have the platform, so called the TP map, which stands for the Thai People Map and Analytics Platform. So for the TP map, we have the simple questions that come to our mind is that who are the poor, right? Where are the poor? And what are the root cause of the poverty? Because we think that the one side fit all measures are no longer existing, right? You cannot just keep the cash and out to the poor people and they will, they will um, escape from the poverty trap. No, it's, it's not anymore. Or you can just um, provide the training, the basic training to the poor people and they will have the better standard of living is no anymore, right? You have to know how to eradicate poverty in a more sustainable manner, right? For this one um, here, we initiate the platform, so-called TP map. TP map is a big data analytics platform that we gather the information from a number of the government database together. You know that before this, the, the data of the people, of especially the poor people, they, they, they are not all together, right? They, they are with the, uh, a number of our ministries. For example, the Ministry of Labor, the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Social um, Development and Human Securities, the Ministry of Public Health. Um, it's kind of the, 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 the separate database. Right. For the TP map, we try to integrate the government database all together in one data, and we will know exactly who are the poor. Right? We can track the poor by the ID number, right? the ID numbers of the people. And when we know that with the A, that he is a poor, for example, and we will, we will know exactly what is the income of the middle A, what is the expenditure of the middle A, what is the housing patterns or the living arrangement of the middle A, right? And also, we also know his members, his household member as well, and how, how they have the interaction between the household members. And that is the, the, the TP Max works, right? When we know exactly who are the poor, we can tackle the problems. Some poor may have the income problems, in the meantime, some poor might not have the income problems, but they have the housing problems or the educational problems or the health problems. So if we know exactly what problems the poor have, we can tackle the problems. So that is the TP map. We use the big data, right, to identify the poor and we tackle the problems, the specific problem of that poor. So 
here is the result of the TP map that we, we when we introduced the TP map in the last four years. And we can see from this slide that the statistics of the poor people, the poor head coverage show, by the way, uh, decreased over time. Even though they, they, they increased slightly um, for the last year due to the COVID 19, but from the year, um, from the last five years, they decreased significantly, right? You can, you can see from this slide. So, this is the example how Thai governments utilize the data to tackle the problems, utilize the data to support the SDGs, right? And so, I hope. Today, um, my slide will give you the, the, the image how the, how the Thai government utilizes the data and how the data is important exactly and very important to the SDG implementations. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for uh, Dr. Du Thai's introduction about the uh, data using in Thailand. And uh, your talk also helped us to better match uh, how could uh, we uh, work together to full, uh, fulfill more uh, data gaps uh, through this uh, uh, collaboration. Uh, thank you. So may I um, invite our next speaker, uh, Dr. Aberdeen uh, Winikon. Uh, so Dr. Aberdeen is an uh, associate professor in the environmental engineering and management program of AIT. And he got his PhD in environmental engineering from the University of uh, Illinois at uh, uh, the US, USA. And uh, his research areas are uh, emission inventory, um, air pollution modeling and monitoring, uh, air quality management, and environmental technology and management. He's also currently working on uh, the air quality monitoring and um, uh, mon uh, modeling uh, using uh, Earth observation data for uh, measuring the indicators of SDG in, in Thailand. So uh, Dr. Abadin, yeah, please. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you Dr. Wen Chao for the introduction. Uh, let me share my screen. My... Okay, so yeah, good afternoon everyone. So, um, my topic is going to be the research activity on the Big Earth data for the SDG in Thailand. And I'm happy that uh, today uh, my, my talk is after Dr. Tachai from the SDC and the SDC because he also addressed that, okay, in order to uh, manage or um, introduce the SDG correctly in Thailand, he also need the data. And then we, what we did in, with what we are doing in Thailand is now we try to conduct the research in order to get those data feeding into the right uh, partner or the user so that it can monitor the progress of the SDG correctly in Thailand. Um, so the activity that I will talk today is under the project that fund by the National Research Council of Thailand. Uh, this project um, has uh, Dr. Montip as the advisor and also not only myself, uh, we also have Dr. Wen Chao Dr. Sawachor and Dr. Uh, Lai as the uh, project uh, investigator in this project. So um, first, the introduction about why we need the data or why we need to look at the Earth observation. So uh, usually we can see that there's the challenge on the tracking of SDG progress in any location, I believe. Um, if you look particularly for the, the information that the UN Statistical Commission um, identified indicator on the global scale, in total, there are about 300, uh, 230 indicators to monitor 169 target of SDG. And those indicators is not only like a lot of indicator, but also you can see that some indicator going to be focused on the local scale some indicator going to be on the national scale, and also some indicator going to be, maybe can be acquired on the regional scale or something like that. So there are some complications in order to acquire the data and also different um, level of the data that we can use in order to measure the progression of the SDG. Um, in Thailand, I believe that I use different um, 
data year as um, compared to Dr. Tat Chai, but uh, Tat Thai, but um, this is the one of the voluntary national review that Thailand uh, submitted to the UN um, based on the SDG in Thailand. Uh, in that report, um, Thailand identified that there are some challenges in formulating SDG indicator due to several reasons. Uh, first, there is the lack of statistical expertise. Second, uh, the data competitiveness. The third one is data disaggregation. The fourth one is sustainability of the indicators. And the last one is duplication in the data collection among different agencies. Um, so within that report, uh, with the challenge that we that Thailand have, um, in that report also identify that one, one of the measures that can be used in order to address the challenges in formulating the indicator um, is to apply the modern science, technology, and innovation, which the remote sensing and big data are considered. So that um, during that time, in I think I believe in 2017 and 20, 2019, um, Thailand also looked for the data to fulfill the gap. And those data can be coming from several sources, including remote sensing and big data. Okay, if we, because today we talk a lot about the Earth observation, um, but maybe just briefly uh, describe what will happen if we have the data on the Earth observation. Um, so the Earth observation is the, um, in general, going to be the in collecting of information about the planet Earth on the physical, chemical, and biological system uh, using the remote sensing technology. Um, those uh, usually going to be involved the satellite that carry the image device, imaging device. Uh, the step, the simple step, going to be the first one, going to be the data collection. Uh, the good thing about satellite is usually when they collect the data, going to be cover the land, which is going to be the on the larger scale, compared to the compared to the local uh, method that we use in order to collect the data. For example, the a monitoring station or something like that. The monitoring station um, usually can be provide information on that specific location, or maybe about one to one, uh, one by one kilometers, or maybe five by five kilometers around those monitoring station. And it also need um, like some budget and also some expertise in order to maintain those kind of monitoring station. So it will be very challenging for the country to own several monitoring station to cover the whole the whole country, um, which is not the same as the satellite that usually the satellite circulate around the earth or some satellite just look for some location on the earth, but they provide information that are useful in order to uh, can be used in order to measure the progression of the SDG. So after the data collection. Uh, we need to do some atmospheric correction and also some geometric correction because the data that we measure is come from the top of the atmosphere down to the Earth's surface. Then on the third step, we need to think about some uh, algorithm that gonna change from what the satellite provide to the data that we require in order to uh, monitor the SDG. So with the ability that we obtain from the uh, satellite, the Earth observation technology have a great potential to address the global challenge in terms of the environment and natural resource, energy, disaster, and other things. Okay, so uh, that are the introduction, and I would like to move to the objective of our project. So the main objective of our project is to generate and also apply the big Earth data for monitoring and accessing a selected indicator associated with the SDG so that it can provide implication for the integration and mainstreaming of technology into policy toward the implementation of SDG in Thailand. With that objective, we have the four specific objectives. The first one is we uh, will generate and use the big earth data to fill the missing data and provide the new sources of data for evaluation of select SDG indicator. The second one is we will apply and contextualize the new proposed scientific-based 
methodology and also the framework to evaluate the SDG on the basis of big earth data technology and models. The third one is we will provide a lesson uh, from the application of big earth data into an assessment of SDG implementation. And if possible, we will also uh, propose a new modified framework that will fit with the context of Thailand. And the last one with all of the data, with all of the uh, SDG calculation, then we will provide the indication and recommendation for the integration of big earth data and technology in the policy formulation and implementation toward the SDG achievement. Uh, this is our project concept. So in our project gonna be focused on uh, four SDGs. The first one gonna be SDG number two, which is like zero hunger. Second one gonna be clean water and sanitation, SDG number six. The third one gonna be SDG number 11, which is the sustainable city and communities. And last one gonna be SDG number 14, which is the life underwater. Um, in this project, we are not, uh, we are focusing on some indicator that we are listed here. This indicator, some indicator gonna be focused uh, only on the scientific term. For example, measuring the particulate matter concentration in the atmosphere. Some indicator gonna be include also the socioeconomic data that needs some local uh, data collection. For example, the amount of food that produced in different communities and so on. Uh, in this project, uh, we will uh, use the big earth data in order to fulfill the gap of the data missing. And those data missing can be uh, fulfilled by the earth observation. Some of the uh, socioeconomic data that we can collect from the ground. Um, and then we, from those data, we will um, validate some method and then propose, if possible, the methodology in order to develop the SDG progression, uh, measuring the SDG progression in Thailand. Um, with that, we will also have the component for the stakeholder engagement. We will talk with different users, uh, whether um, the development of the data that we have going to be benefit to the um, activity that they are doing. And then last one going to be the governance, governance and also the development of the policy brief. So in general, uh, in our project, we will produce the, uh, the activity, the uh, activity going to be include uh, secondary data acquisition from the national and some local government and organization. Uh, the activity data uh, activity going to be also include the field data collection, uh, some field survey and also field sampling event for the uh, local data collection. Uh, it will include earth observation data collection uh, from different um, platform and also from different remote sensing uh, equipment. Uh, we will include the demonstration of uh, some developed scientific style methodologies and framework uh, with the select study area in Thailand. And we will include also the stakeholder workshop and project output dissemination activities. Okay, so uh, I will introduce some of the example of the output that we have. I believe gonna be three example that uh, we are doing in our project. So the first one gonna be the um, indicator 14.1.1a, which is gonna be related to the index of coastal eutrophication. Um, some brief con concept about this one. So eutrophication is the excess nutrition loading in the into the coastal environment from anthropogenic source that will make the excessive growth of plant, algae, uh, photo, uh, phytoplankton, and so on. So um, instead of direct monitoring, then we can use the big earth data in order to help um, monitoring these uh, parameters. And with the UN data, they recommend three level of the data that can be used in order to assess this indicator. Level one data can be the global available data from the earth observation and also the modeling. Level two data gonna be the national data which will be collected from the countries, within the countries. Um, level three gonna be some other additional indicator which gonna be suggested that the country might consider to collect more. 
Um, and then the UN also provide the monitoring parameter that can be used in order to identify the index of the coastal eutrophication, uh, which can be ranged from level one, level two, and level three. So in this project, we collect all level one, level two, level three, like in terms of the satellite data, uh, in terms of the local field survey, so that our methodology that develop and the data that we produce gonna be in, um, can be confined with the international standard of the methodology, but and also have the data on the uh, variability of the local data. Um, so these are some examples of the output of indicator 14.1.1a. So uh, on the um, X axis, you can see that this is the uh, data like color field A and also the termidity that we derive from the satellite. And then this one we compare with the data that we collect from the Metropolitan Water Works Authority and also some of the field sample. On the bottom, you see the uh, temperature of different lakes in Thailand that also retrieved from the satellite. So that from all this data we can use in order to uh, calculate the indicator for eutrophication in Thailand. Uh, the second example is the indicator 11.6.2, which is the annual mean level of fine particulate matter in the city. Um, for this indicator, we use the data from two platforms. The first one is the MODIS satellite, and the second one is the Himawari Air satellite, which each satellite have the, its own benefit. The MODIS satellite, uh, which is the, the product called my app provide uh, one by one square kilometers of the data. Uh, for the Himawari satellite, provide the data on the hourly average. So that from uh, the data from these two platforms in this study, we merge the AOD from two satellites, and then we develop the relationship between AOD and PM2.5, so that we can calculate the population weight PM2.5 and no mean uh, concentration which is going to be the uh, one indicator for the SDG progression. And then you can see in this equation, uh, usually um, proposed by the UN, you can use the concentration as the national average concentration. But in our uh, project, we try to use satellite data. Uh, from this, you can see the, uh, the circle is the data from the monitoring station. In uh, This one is in Chiang Mai, in the northern part of Thailand. And you can see that uh, we have two permanent monitoring stations. And uh, with the satellite, we can develop um, the one by one square kilometers of the uh, PM2.5 concentration over the location that we are interested. So we are developing this one for the whole country. And with that, we will uh, put the uh, concentration of PM2.5 in different location. And then with the population, that we have, then we can calculate the indicator, uh, this indicator. Um, the next indicator is indicator 11.2.1, which is the proportion of population that has convenient access to the public transport. And it can be uh, disaggregated into like sex, age, uh, person with disability and so on. Uh, the concept that provided by the UN is uh, when we're talking about the convenient access to the public transport uh, for the low capacity public transport system, for example, the bus or something like that, uh, people need to be about 500 meters away from those locations. Uh, on the other hand, if we, have, if we are talking about high capacity system, like a real metro, ferry or something like that, then the distance can be expanded to one kilometer. Um, the list of the data source that we can use in order to uh, calculate this indicator uh, can be like location of public transport, which we can get from the satellite, from different, uh, different sources, uh, the street network, and the population data from the census data, and also from uh, other demographic data for this application. So uh, this example of our output, so the study area in this um, indicator is going to be the Bangkok metropolitan region. And then um, the one that I show here is going to be example in Bangkok that we have the population 
Then we have a map that peak, how many people that have access to different type of transportation, uh, public transportation, BTS, MRT, railway, uh, inland water transport, bus, or something like that. And then with uh, different um, sets of the people, like male, female, uh, in different location. And also we can calculate for different age of the people, uh, people, different dis disability. So that this one, we can calculate the indicator 11.2.1 in Thailand. So with that example, I would like to summarize that our project, uh, these are the expected output. The first one, we would, uh, we would like to produce the methodology that's going to be the Earth Observation Based evalu Evaluation Method for the SDG 2, SDG 6, SDG 11, and SDG 14. Uh, we will also develop the database which is going to be the online database that the user list on the right-hand side here uh, can be accessed to this database and then use the data in order to uh, monitor the progression of SDG in Thailand and also uh, use this data in order to um, manage a better quality of the people in Thailand. Anyway, uh, we are not looking only for the database for the SDG development. We look beyond that one. For example, uh, urban PM 2.5 concentration data, usually for the SDG develop, uh, calculation, SDG indicator calculation, we need only the annual data. But in this project, we will also identify and try to calculate and provide the data in terms of the hourly data. So that is going to be more detailed than what required for the SDG. But believe that's going to be benefit to the user for other activities. Uh, we with that we also uh, produce going to produce some map product as the example of the output from the project, and we aim for different type of publication, some international uh, journal publication uh, going on under the project based on the methodology that the, that we develop in this program. Okay, so I think that's all for um, the introduction of our project and also the progress. Uh, again, I would like to uh, thank Digital Belt and Road and also the AAT Belt and Road Research Center. And last but not the least, I would like to thank um, the funding agency, MRCT. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Efferdin, for updating us uh, with the uh, least, uh, recent uh, progress on research activities. Uh, okay, so I would like to invite our next uh, speaker, Dr. Uh, Christoph uh, Bontemp. Uh, Dr. Christoph is a statistician lecturer at the UN Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific, uh, specialized in big data and data science, machine learning, uh, and da data visualization. And he is a member of the UN Committee of Experts on Big Data and Data Science. Uh, and of the uh, one UN ECE machine learning group uh, in two, uh, 2022. Uh, previously in the academics at the uh, tourist school uh, learning group, uh, sorry, uh, of economics, he has published uh, several uh, scientific papers and also books uh, in, uh, in uh, data science and uh, in uh, environmental and food economics. And he holds the PhD uh, in applied uh, applied mathematics uh, from the University of Taurus. Uh, Dr. Christoph, please. Thank you for your kind word and for this introduction. Uh, I'm very happy to participate in this uh, workshop. Uh, before entering into uh, my presentation, uh, which uh, is entitled International Perspective on Big Data in Support of SDG, which is quite a, a big program. Uh, I must mention that the views here uh, I will express are my own and do not reflect either SIAP or SCAP uh, opinions on the topic. So since I'm a, I'm a newcomer in this uh, program, I was not fully aware of the, all the activity of the DBA network and research. I, I read the latest uh, report and I found all the amazing activity that the DBAR program was uh, uh, producing. And as it was recalled by uh, uh, Professor uh, Shobarka, 
Shobaka, sorry. Uh, there are four levels of action in a DBA, and you are now aware of that. But the first one is uh, to design and develop an infrastructure to support the DBA activities. The second is a research on our science, and we have seen many examples today. The third one is interaction within community of scientific and professional stakeholders and between these communities and others. And the fourth one is dissemination of SDG relevant uh, outcomes. And since uh, um, I, 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 I use this, um, this framework to articulate my presentation on these four dimensions, and more specifically, uh, I will focus on the following items. Uh, and I will develop that a little bit more in detail uh, later. So the, in terms of infrastructure, maybe I will question the sustainability of infrastructure and, the, and also the, the, the data needs in a world where we have fast changing technology. In terms of uh, earth science, of course, I'm not a specialist on that, uh, but we have seen uh, once again, uh, example of uh, amazing research today, but there may be uh, challenges when an NSO at the local level wants to integrate this research method into the process of producing statistical data and computing some SDG at the local level. In terms of interaction, I, I will highlight maybe the role of uh, other uh, UN entity working with big data for SDG. So once again, this has been a little bit uh, mentioned uh, by uh, previous uh, presenters, but I will highlight that. As for the first action, I will ask the question uh, or whether or what to disseminate exactly. And maybe that will open for other uh, elements and so some further discussion. So in, in terms of uh, infrastructure, um, I have the impression that there will be new needs at an international level. There are other projects, and I mentioned a few here, such as the, the, the one that uh, you, you, you presented today, but we may separate the infrastructure into the infrastructure for Earth data and the infrastructure for computing that is estimating using machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, and so on. So maybe the architecture for these two things could be different and the models for that could be also different. And the needs in terms of access to the platform may also be uh, quite different. Also, um, there is this uh, big data hub in Hangzhou. I will return to that in, in China. Uh, how is the connection between the DBA and this platform managed to be efficiently uh, providing access to data for uh, other people is one question I, I, I like to, to present here. You will see that I will present many questions because when we deal with perspective, of course, there is a lot of unknown. Most importantly, um, uh, uh, there is also a huge amount of data. I've seen some numbers uh, in the previous presentation with petabytes of data arriving and more this year with new satellites and new images. So what should be shared? What is the value added of each single unit of data. And since we are modeling using models uh, that take this raw data from space and transform that into data that can be exploited, that can be used to produce SDG, we need to train some uh, models and that generates even more data. So at the end of the day, maybe, what is the most interesting to share? The raw data or the trained data set and finally all the models? What is the most important for the final user? And by the way, who are the final users? What do, we, what do they need? Do they need to have access to the data that it, maybe they will not be able to handle because they don't have the infrastructure? Or do they need a model that is pre-trained, for example? Here again, uh, I also maybe talk a little bit about the patrimonial approach. What should be stored? What should be kept for the future? Everything or a part of that, how do we decide what you keep and what you do not keep? How do you measure the quality of the raw data? Are questions that maybe in this perspective could be, could be approached. I will now move now on now, sorry, to the to the Earth observation research. Um, one big uh, issue in uh, research everywhere in the world is uh, reproducibility, and the other one is 
how we move from research to production. Uh, Dr. Tutai already mentioned production and the mechanism of cooperation between private and public sectors, which is probably one of the issues for the future. But uh, reproducibility and replicability of method is not granted when you use machine learning AI based on, on, this, uh, on, on this data. So that once again, in the perspective I see, uh, there could be some issue there. Uh, second, and this may be uh, not surprising for someone that comes from the Toulouse School of Economics, uh, are there some research on the optimal organization between entities for sharing optimally the data? And secondly, are there some economics or some research on the economics of this data? The, the point is, there are markets of data, there are private competitors. Will data sharing as the one you are mentioning, and I was very happy to see that the open data movement is in place and that you, you plan to open all the data. But the question I may wonder, we may discuss and we may be uh, foreseeing in the future is the, the question of if there will be a priceless um, uh, data sharing process in the future, or on the contrary, if we have to face uh, data brokers, and if there will be a, a market for this data that are costly to produce. And when I say data, it's a very broad sense. It could be raw data, once again, or refined data, or models that are pre-trained. A third challenge uh, is uh, the granularity uh, of the approach. It's not a challenge, actually, it's an improvement. We see more and more granular uh, uh, results. We have seen an example just right now by previous presentation. Uh, but with, uh, with the granularity, there is also this question of uh, privacy at some point. If you classify cities in different, uh, different classes, whatever the, the type of indicator you're looking for, uh, there may be some privacy issues and concern. Also, and I think this is a, a little bit uh, linked to that, the fact that the accuracy and the uncertainty should also be um, taken with care. These are a result of models, estimates. These are not really observation from ground truth. So one should be aware of that. I, of course, you all are, but I want to, to put that here, that the fact that with more, more um, um, method, more advanced method comes also more caution in the use of this data. Uh, I just briefly mentioned that maybe in the perspective for the future that they, they, there are some other big data, AES data, that is ship data or mobile phone data, citizen data, and IoT that could be linked with these data, generating even more uh, petabytes of data. And finally, uh, I, I think also that uh, we should, I mean, that's one of we, by we, I mean the, the community should be aware of the social acceptability of research uh, and the result that that may be one of the challenge in the future. Do we trust this data? Do we trust this data that are estimation? Do we trust them more than the, the, the grand data we are used to in the, in the past? So these are one of the perspective on this, but I, once again, uh, my, my remarks may be very naive because I'm not uh, a specialist in, uh, in, in, in this, uh, and I'm not a member of the DBAR, obviously. So in terms of interaction, um, uh, very briefly, there are other entities and institutions there. Uh, uh, Professor Q already mentioned the UN Big Data Hub in Hangzhou. So I, it's good, I think, that the DBAR and the UN Big Data Hub is working with uh, uh, hand in hand, I would say. I have to mention that there is also the UN Global Platform and there is a big data task team on Earth observation. You are probably working with them. There is also a training catalog uh, for some of the Earth observation methods that you are using. That is um, uh, already in place at the, at the UN Big Data uh, platform so that people wanted to, to use this method or to, to train in this method, they can um, follow these courses that have been produced by the task team on Earth observation. Um, I, I have to mention also that uh, I recently was aware that there is this GEMS uh, program to monitor air pollution from space in Korea. 
So since the title that I was asked to answer was perspective, international perspective, uh, I think that uh, this also, what is happening, what is the, the Korean people are doing with these satellites uh, to monitor air pollution in from space is, is something that could be uh, interesting. Also at SCAP, uh, there is a, a lot of, uh, I would say, information and documents and activity that are worth advertising on the topic of big data in general and Earth observation uh, in particular. Now, how and what to disseminate? Uh, this may seem a naive question because the SDG indicators have, uh, you know, uh, at least a few of them, uh, there are lots of, of, of them that we want to, to disseminate in the end. This is a final product, but not only, we, we may also have byproducts of that, maybe local uh, information that is not uh, really among the, the, the indicators. But also what, what type of data set? I mentioned that already. So are there maps that the final, final result that everybody can understand? Can that be interfaces or training data set? I mentioned that uh, already. Or do we want also at the same time to disseminate methods and tools or packages so that they're ready to use for other people that do not have all the primal information or the knowledge? Do we need also to, uh, to, to disseminate the needs and gaps in terms of data? Which data set are really essential? which could be needed if there are some lags, or some gaps in the data. Also, and I think this is something that uh, we should be aware of, uh, research always tells successful stories, but failure because of data quality, methods, methods limitation, uncertainty. This failure may be also important, even more important to avoid other people to do the same mistake. So I think in terms of sharing and dissemination in this action, we may have some perspective and some international collaboration also on the failures. I think that's something important. Uh, since I know that we are um, quite running out of late, I must maybe hurry up. So I would like to highlight maybe that, that they could be, we could see that as a proposal or something that is a missing element here, the fifth element. Uh, it has been mentioned a little bit, but I didn't see it really in the action of the DBAR, but uh, there are lots of international perspective in training. It has been mentioned by Professor Shobakar in his welcoming remarks, but there is no axis there in terms of training. So many, many courses are already there. And it's also something that could answer some of the question I already uh, um, Pose here in this presentation, there are courses by the UN Task Team on Earth Observation. ADB has produced guidebooks on the use of AI and Earth data to map poverty. SCAP step-by-step -step guide on the use of GIS techniques is available uh, on the web with application to flood hazard. There are SCAP ICT and disaster risk reduction division training. This GEMS I was mentioning in Korea is also a producing uh, 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 some courses. The previous uh, presenter mentioned also conferences that will happen in 2023 and, uh, and, semi and seminars. I think maybe it would be good to go also to the basis of training and training people who will apply this method in, 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 uh, in the end, people at NSO, people in, in international institution, who may not have the knowledge or the infrastructure to be able to compute this number and to compute the SDG. So um, I, I, I know that we are uh, a little bit late. Uh, so I, want, I will conclude quite briefly. I think obviously uh, international cooperation is essential in, in, in many dimensions. Uh, and I will advocate for a training dimension that has the potential for even more interaction and knowledge sharing between and within community. I see, of course, uh, many challenges. Uh, we mentioned the, the infrastructure, the, the Earth observation research, the interaction. There are obviously some challenges in terms of scalability 
of a research from one single example that it takes a lot of time to, to produce, to be able to spread among other partners and to be spread among country or for either at a larger scale or on the contrary, at the more granular scale. In terms of organization and efficiency, I don't know what is the model. I have the impression that many people are trying to do similar things in different parts of the world. I, I, I see that overlapping is not a bad thing per se, but in terms of efficiency of, uh, of, um, of the, 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 the means that we have here, which are scores, I know that. So in terms of efficiency, we may need to increase the knowledge sharing and the relationship between all these entities and between DBA and all over the world, all the partners that are doing not exactly the same thing, but similar thing and similar research. I know that at the research level, this happens obviously in conferences and all of that, but maybe when it goes to platform sharing infrastructure, training models, maybe this is where we may have a challenge. And obviously I see a challenge in the social acceptability of the results from that. I mentioned that already, but I think this, this is something really important. There is a lot of doubt in, in, for the society in, and a, a lot of fear that AI uh, is, is going to rule uh, the lives of millions of people. And I think here again, uh, there should be some efforts to help spreading the world that these methods uh, are, are based and are made to help people in their current life. And that's uh, something that is not so easy to do. So I see many challenges, but uh, as for today, I, I, see, I see also a great enthusiasm in all the presenters and this wonderful uh, movement that uh, I've discovered today. So uh, we can be optimistic for the future that all this uh, perspective will not be challenges, but opportunities. I think I will stop there. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much, Dr. Christoph, and I appreciate you share some interesting perspective, uh, from, uh, different from uh, what uh, we see, like uh, from the Chinese vision and the Thailand vision, but more also from the international vision. So you also give us very valuable uh, advices or suggestions. So for the uh, researchers, experts, and also practitioners on this um, scheme, uh, then, uh, which is valuable for us to take by home and think about it and uh, perhaps can adapt our current uh, activities. So very uh, thank you for your sharing. And uh, I would like to thank uh, all of our distinguished speakers today again um, for your uh, valuable sharing and also discussion with us. Um, so uh, I'm pleased to call back all of our speakers, uh, Professor Chu, uh, Dr. Aberdeen and Dr. Christoph for our uh, panel discussion, and uh, Dr. Monty Suryatana, uh, Director of the uh, Digital Belt and Road International Center uh, of Excellence of Bangkok, uh, will be the moderator for this section. Yeah, Dr. Monty. Thank you yeah. very much for your kind introduction. I'm privileged to be the moderator for the panel discussions. So welcome our panelists, Dr. Uh, Yubao Shu, uh, Dr. Ekbedin Winitkun, and Dr. Christoph uh, von Thames. So the first questions that I would like to ask, um, it's about DIBA ICOE Bangkok and uh, International Research Center for Big Data for Sustainable Development Goals. I think it has been launched as a regional hub of the program and engaged in several activities to improve SDG monitoring and reporting using Earth observation technology. But however, we have uh, also should be a potential of both centers to play more essential roles uh, in this initiative. So do you have some suggestion on how we can make better use of uh, DIPA ICOEs as conduit of information and knowledge between scientists in Belt and Road countries and also China scientists in DIBA and International Research Center of Big Data for 
sustainable development goals be together. So I like to ask uh, Professor Chu, please let's bounce on this. Professor Chu, are you here? If Professor Shu is not here, I'd like to continue asking uh, Dr. Christophe Bentons. Well, you have mentioned implementation of the United Nations 2030 agenda and SDG requires strong alliance between scientists and academic community, business and the government sector. And the interplay of science practice policy and society and so-called science and evidence-based policy making is essential. So this is partly a matter of uh, technical capability and also a matter of political will and priorities, including budgetary, I think, priorities. So my question is, how do you think we can utilize the platform of UN Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific and uh, DIBA ICOE and CBAS and its global partnerships to help convince our national governments that they must provide more uh, resources to carefully monitoring of the SDGs, please. Uh, thank you for, for this question. Uh, it's it's <laughs> always difficult to answer the question of how we can convince governments. <laughs> uh, we, it is true, however, that monitoring SDG has been a challenge for many countries in Asia Pacific region, uh, uh, despite the fact that there are some tools that have been launched at the SCAP level, such as the um, uh, SCAP national SDG tracker that launched last year. Uh, also, uh, maybe the, to return to your to your question, um, also we can we can note that in the region in the Asia Pacific region, most SDG indicators with no data available at the national level are in goals eleven, environment and sixteen, peace, justice, and strong institutions. But in goal eleven, environment, I think this is where uh, we can um, DBA and the CBIS can help because this is something, and we have seen example in the presentation, this is something where the technology can help, at least to help produce this SDG. So we will not convince the, the, the government, we will help the NSO and the statistician in the country to produce um, this, these indicators. And that's maybe something easier. So, in that, and since you ask what the SIAP can do, let me share again my screen on the, the fifth element I was um, mentioning during my presentation. And I think I will focus on training because as I mentioned, there are many courses available. There are guidebooks provided by SCAP, but also SIAP has courses on big data, machine learning, data visualization, including maps. Uh, SCAP has a step-by-step -step guide on use of GIS technique with application to flood adults. So it means that if a country wants to mm -hmm. monitor uh, SDG uh, in environment or in, in, in this particular area, there is something there. And uh, I think all of that are open to international uh, cooperation as well. Mm -hmm. So my answer, long answer to your short question is that through training of people at the statistical layer in national statistical system, we may help them to produce some indicator that will convince probably or may help at least, do not, do not harm, right? It cannot harm, but it, they may convince government that this is the way to go. And obviously, I, also, I want also to mention the fact that big data alone will not do the job. Mm. We, we need ground truth. We need also to have some local information for that. And the NSO have that, right? So one plus one make, makes three there. That make something that is bigger than, than, the, than the, the two elements uh, together. So by that, uh, I, I think that uh, we cannot convince uh, government, but we can help NSO 
through the technology and, and using the, the DBAR network. So I, I hope that this answer a little bit to this very, very complex question. Thank you very much uh, for your kind explanation. I think it's very clear that the role of SCAP can do mostly also on capacity building training. Yeah. I want to go to the next questions, maybe Dr. Ekbedin. What should be about specific priority of research and capacity building development, uh, cooperation utilizing big data in the context of the SDGs? So Dr. Ekbedin, please. Yeah, uh, thank you. So I think this is a good question also. And maybe some of the answer already like uh, answered by Dr. Christoph in his presentation. So maybe I just rephrase it again. So maybe the first thing that uh, I think we need gonna be some that data sharing platform. Mm -hmm. Those data sharing platform, I think maybe need to be easy to access by different organization mm -hmm. or different part of the world. And also if possible, maybe can we develop some standard format so that even though you work with different satellites or different uh, yeah, satellite that belong to different organization. But if you go to the website, you can understand, okay, the first column is this one, second column is this one or something like that. So I think in that case, even though we have uh, different uh, in terms of the background or history in order to use the data, but if we can synchronize this card, the format or something, then I think it would be nice in order to move further in the future and then use data sharing together. Um, yeah, the second one gonna be some of the knowledge transfer that I think is also very important. Um, as Dr. Christoph also already said, uh, different uh, activity happen in different countries. Uh, it's good to be, well, it's not bad to be overlapped, but I think somehow we need to maybe stop and then uh, start to look together that, okay, what should be the most benefit to each country or most, most benefit to each region. Maybe we can uh, combine the data together, uh, focus on some methodology and so on. So I think this one is also very important. And the last one that I think is gonna be very challenging is how to, from the data that we produce, how can we, how can we move from this one to the implementation, right? Because um, we are talking about the size of developing the SDG indicator monitoring, but after that, if we know that, okay, this SDG is this level, so what should be done? Something like that. I think the, the center can, can initiate this kind of thing. What should be the step after uh, we also assess the, the progress of the SDG? So I think maybe three things that we need to look to, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Egbrin. So very clear explanation. I don't know whether Dr. Chu is still with me. Are you here, Dr. Chu? So if not here, I would like to uh, make a conclusion of this seminar. Well, there are four main challenges in the implementation of 2030 agenda for the sustainable development, including the first one that we talk about missing data and the evaluation of SDGs indicators. Second is complementary and non-complementary interconnection between different SDGs that we ask you need to look at. Third, complicated and varied problems in quantifying and monitoring indicators within different national and the local contexts. And the fourth one is difficulties in modeling indicators to monitor SDGs. Particularly the main challenge in monitoring progress relates to the lack of data available for the development of indicators. And this lack of data has been identified for more than half of indicators as mentioned by the United Nations. So this webinar today provide platform to discuss the potential future collaboration opportunities under the Digital Belt and Road Scheme and also the United Nations to support the sustainable development aspirations of countries in Southeast Asia. Well, I'm very pleased to inform you that uh, from the outcome of our regional meeting 
yesterday of the Asia Pacific Network for the global research. Uh, we do understand and recognize the importance of big data for sustainable development goals, so APN. For the next uh, fiscal year, we, we, we will focus on the big data for sustainable development goals. APN is the intergovernmental network of 22 countries and working together in Asia Pacific region, and that is successfully uh, uh, success. I'd like to thank all the speakers today, uh, especially uh, uh, Professor uh, Ekbedin, uh, uh, Associate Professor Ekbedin, Associate uh, Dr. Wen Chao Xu, uh, and also uh, Dr. Christoph uh, Ben Toms, and also other keynote speakers. Uh, Dr. Chu, Professor Wadong Gua, Professor uh, and uh, Dr. Vipalat Diong, the Executive Director of the National Research Council of Thailand. Uh, with that, I thank you all participants and we would like to have the meeting adjourned and thank you again and stay safe. Thank you very much. Swadiha.